Hey everyone, how's it going? Thanks so much for tuning in. In today's video, I'll hopefully be ironing out the majority of my clearance problems with the 350 swap in my 89 Chevrolet S10. If you missed the last episode, I put a link in the description box below. I test fitted the powertrain for the first time and while everything fit pretty good overall, with how I'm wanting to build the truck and where I'm wanting to place the engine, I still need to make a lot more room up front with the radiator and the condenser because I'm still wanting to keep AC. So I'm gonna try to get a little bit creative Creative. The thing is, there's more than one way to go about putting a V8 in an S10. Thankfully, people have been doing this swap for decades, so there's a ton of information out there that is just invaluable with helping guide a project like this, especially if you're kind of new to doing a swap. Also, you gotta remember too that just because something worked for one person, it may not necessarily work for you. It just depends on how you're building your truck. So I like to think of something like this as kind of a blank slate. Yes, the information is out there. Take advantage of that information because again, it will save you a lot of headaches in the long run, but also treat it as a learning experience and don't be afraid to try something new because you know, at the end of the day, if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. At least you hopefully have fun in the process and you learn something. For example, with my truck, I'm trying to go for more ease of serviceability. So where I have the engine currently, it actually places the transmission pretty close to where it was originally. So if for some reason the transmission has to come back out for some reason, the bell housing bolts are very easy to access and it'll be a lot more simple than it would be if the engine was crammed up against the firewall. Like I said in the last video, I'm also trying to run an HEI distributor for the simplicity of things, but because HEIs are quite a bit bigger than a traditional distributor setup, it does take up a lot of space and limits how far back you can push the engine. So if I push it back any further than it is now, it'll run into the firewall and not work. So I'm trying to avoid that. It's definitely a give-take relationship here because the further you're able to push the engine back, the more room you're gonna be able to clear up for the radiator and fan setup. A lot of people use pusher fans, which places the fans on the outside of the core support instead of the inside, like you see here, but I'm trying to run a traditional polar fan setup. That being said, I've already replaced the original tall water pump with a reverse rotation short aluminum water pump from a 1986 Chevrolet Corvette. I also have a C4 Corvette aluminum radiator, and what I'm gonna have to do, even though I was able to clear up a lot of space with that water pump, the radiator needs to go further into the core support. I'm also gonna try to push the condenser further forward and see if I can squeeze out another inch, inch and a half or so, which should be just enough to clear the serpentine belt. Hey, if it works, that will be fantastic, but if it doesn't, no harm, no foul, because I'm sure I got another core support lying around here somewhere. I'm just excited to try to do something different and get a little creative and just see what I can come up with. So keep your fingers crossed. Without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Of course, a special thanks to O'Reilly Auto Parts for their support with the channel. Remember, if you guys are knee deep in some projects and need to get some parts on order, don't forget to check out O'ReillyAuto.com and take advantage of the exclusive discount code SOBKYLE20, which allows you to take 20% off of purchases of $100 or more. I put a link in the description box below. To push the condenser as far forward as possible, I'm gonna first start by making this center hole bigger. I'm gonna cut out a strip of metal all the way around the perimeter, maybe a half inch or so, because if you look closely, the lip of metal actually curves inward and I wanna get rid of everything that could potentially hold me back from gaining maximum clearance. Also, there's a strip of metal that comes down behind the hood latch support, so I'm gonna get rid of that too. Instead, I'm gonna build a custom cradle that the condenser is going to sit in. It'll be braced in three spots, sides and down in the middle, and then if it all goes well, it'll attach directly to the core support in a way that it should actually add a lot of strength to the support. First things first, let's pull the old condenser. Thank you. 
Next, I'm gonna mark out where the cuts are gonna be and remove that hood latch support. The hole is cut, the edges have been smoothed. Now I'm gonna move on to building the cradle for the condenser. So this piece is gonna be the top support. So if I flip it around, stick it up there, fits perfect. It overlaps on both sides so I can secure it to the core support. So I'm happy with that. The bottom piece fit just fine after a couple of modifications. I had to get rid of the little tabs on either side that originally held the rubber isolators. I also made a notch in the middle to account for that metal clip. That's where the bottom of the hood latch support bolts into. Now before I go any further, I need to notch the inside of the core support so I can actually tuck this Corvette radiator up in there. This piece of metal right here going all the way across is double walled, so I just need to cut out enough that I can tuck it in there without cutting the top portion. One downside when doing this radiator setup, if you don't use some sort of inline filler neck somewhere else, you're actually going to have to cut a hole big enough to be able to access this radiator cap. Now, I'm gonna think on this a little bit and see if I can come up with a good solution because I don't want there to be just a giant chunk missing from the core support. I still want there to be some good support but also have good access, so I'll see what I come up with. After cutting, cutting, and more cutting, I finally get the radiator tucked into the core support. Now, it won't sit back that far, obviously, because I still have to fit the condenser, but it just gives you an idea of how much extra room I was able to make. Now, I'm not going to cut the hole for the filler neck yet, because I need to test fit it all again to see where the radiator is actually going to be sitting. I don't want to take off more material than I need to. So I guess let's get it back in the truck and loosely held in place and see what we're looking like. For the moment, the fans, the radiator, and the condenser are just sandwiched together and held in by tape. I haven't put any metal brackets in place or rubber isolators, so this is just a very basic test fit. But in case anybody was wondering, when using this style accessory drive and serpentine system, the correct pulley that you want to use with the Corvette short water pump is actually a Mercruiser pulley. It's the same bolt pattern and everything. All you have to do is bore out the center hole to three quarters so it can fit on the shaft properly. If you try to use the original pulley that came on the tall water pump, the offset will be wrong and the belt won't line up. But as you can see, this pulley puts the belt exactly where it needs to go and it's not that expensive of a part. So that's honestly pretty cool. I'm really happy with the clearance I've been able to make so far, but in my opinion, I still think it's way too tight. I have an idea that I'm going to try. I don't think it's going to work, but you never know until you try. With the short water pump, the outlet for the lower radiator hose actually sits quite a bit closer to the engine, which puts it right in the way of this bracket. I had to bore a hole just so I can get the bracket test fitted. It's still not quite big enough, though, to allow the hose to get put on, so I'm going to have to do some more cutting. Here's another look at that pulley from the top. I'm thinking about tilting everything forward. So the way everything is positioned right now, there's a slight rake with the top of the radiator and fans and everything going towards the truck, but I want to tilt everything out this way so the fans are pointing more up, which I think will be okay because 
I'm gonna be running a cowl hood on this, which is vented at the back. So if I'm able to push more heat directly out through that opening, in theory, it should work out pretty good. I had an extra hood support latch thing um, off of one of my parts trucks. This is the one that was off this truck. So that's what it looked like before. I cut the whole intersection out. Now I'm gonna go ahead and make this hole wider and see if it will all tilt. This is actually looking pretty good, I think. I still need to figure out a way to add rubber pieces here and there so we don't have any metal on metal rubbing, but the entire width of the condenser at the top is sticking past the core support while the bottom is still tucked in. I could notch this even more to bring it further forward, but it might not be needed. I'm gonna go ahead and cut a hole over there for the radiator filler net because that's preventing me from tilting it all the way back, but I think this might work out. I am quite happy with this right now. I really did not expect it to work out as good as it has. I'm sure if there hasn't been already, there's gonna be a number of people that say I should have done it this way or should have done it that way, but it's like I was talking about at the beginning of the video. With a project, don't ever be afraid to try something different. Again, it may not work for everybody, but if you can make it work and you're happy with the results and you're not, you know, ruining your truck necessarily, I say go for it. But as it is right now, the radiator cannot come any more forward because it's hitting that top edge of the core support. So I don't wanna mess with that anymore. It's, it's perfect as it is. I did notch this support bracket a little bit more just to give me some extra flexibility with positioning the condenser, especially because I still have to build that cradle for it and I need a little bit of space to be able to fit that in there. As far as the filler neck for the radiator, it's okay. I didn't want to cut too much up top or down below so I can still have good integrity, but I'm about to run to O'Reilly and pick up a new radiator cab and make sure there's good enough clearance to, you know, take it on and off without too much of a hassle, but we'll figure that out. I'm actually going to be running a hood strut conversion kit on this when it's all put back together. So I'm deleting the prop rod, so that doesn't matter that you know, that clip isn't there anymore, and I'll take that off in just a second. It's probably not the easiest to see on camera, but as far as I can tell, I'm not gonna have any issues with pulley clearance or belt clearance. Everything is far enough forward that I'm pretty happy with it. If I have to make any other adjustments, I'll do it with the engine, but it shouldn't be much, if any. The fan shroud had these curved raised portions on the outside edges and a couple down the middle section. I cut those off and made it more level so it sits totally flush up against the radiator. The gaps are way tighter than they were before and it freed up a little bit of clearance. The grill still fits perfect. I was actually just about to make the cradle for the core support but because I was able to tilt everything forward, I've come up with an alternate design that I think is gonna work a little bit better. It took another day or so of me just playing around, but I finally found the perfect solution for me. I've got it all together right now, but I will take it all apart in just a second so I can show you guys all the brackets that I made and how everything fits together, but this is gonna work out just fantastic. Also, after this video, I'm gonna start taking everything back out of the truck because I still have to redo the frame and clean up the wire harness, get the engine ready and all of that for final assembly. And while that's being done, the core support and all of the brackets and stuff that I've made are gonna get sent out to be powder coated so it's gonna look really nice and be really durable. Since we're up here, I'll go ahead and show you what I did for the condenser. At the very top, to hold it in at the back, I have a piece of angle iron spanning the entire opening of the core support. I also welded in these little tabs. That's so it could be held at the front too, but I left plenty of room so I could still be able to get a nice insulator in there so we don't have metal on metal rubbing together. 
I am by no means a fabricator and I still have a lot to learn when it comes to welding, but I am really happy with these little brackets. Especially what I had to do on the back side, which of course I'll show you guys that in just a moment. I'd like to give a quick thanks to Robert's Oxygen. They keep me supplied with all of my welding gas and various pieces of equipment and their customer service is fantastic. So big, big thanks to them for making a lot of this easy, especially when I forget to order new supplies. But anyway, before I get all of this stuff off to powder coat, I do want to do some finishing work off camera to make sure everything is super pretty. One thing that I'm going to be doing to a lot of the sharp edges is adding some black flexible door edge trim. For example, right here where the metal is pretty close to the condenser, there's space. I don't expect this to flex that much, but just in case it did, I would rather the door edge guard touch the fins than the actual, you know, metal. So it just gives it a little extra cushion. I added some welds to the latch support too, mainly in this corner and in this corner because I had to cut some of the bracing out when trying to make room. So all of that is nice and solid. I also added a couple pieces of small angle iron in there just to try to prevent any flex, but it feels pretty strong now. I think it's going to work out nice. The majority of the insulation I'll be using throughout, depending on how much space there is, is a combination of like sticky sided foam weather strip as well as gas tank insulation straps. These are really, really nice because, well, the factory puts them in between the gas tank and the frame so you don't have metal on metal contact. So this is really good stuff to put in really tight areas like up in here or down where the condenser is touching the core support. Any place like that where you don't have a lot of room or you don't have enough room for slightly thicker foam, that should work out really nice. My main thing was making sure none of the vital cooling components were rubbing on one another because obviously there's going to be a lot of vibrations in the front and you don't want a vibration to turn into a hole in your radiator or in the condenser or whatever because then you just got a big old mess. So that was the primary focus of putting everything together the way I did. Now I'm going to take everything out of the back side so you can see you know, what I did at the back of the condenser and how everything else fits in. Real quick, as you saw, I did cut a hole in the core support for the radiator cap. I didn't really see another option right off. I mean, I have seen other options like the inline filler necks that you could put in the radiator hose. There are actually, I believe, thermostat housings that have a fill set up on it. They're a little expensive though, so this was my kind of budget get it done type deal. <laughs> I also added a extra piece of metal back there that I bolted in just to give this piece a little bit of extra thickness and it still feels really strong. Of course I'll be cleaning these edges up too so they're not quite so sharp but it's just enough space to get in there and work that cap. On the back of the radiator where it sits up against the condenser, being that I angled the condenser as far forward as I did, there's a little bit of space in between the two, but towards the bottom there's actually a little bracket on the condenser that holds like the pipes in place so they don't like move around. And there's two screws that come, you know, a little close to like this area. It's not touching, but again, just to kind of safeguard, I actually took some 3 8 fuel hose and split it down the middle, cut two pieces, and it fit perfect. It kind of tucks in this edge of the radiator and wraps in over there. There's no clearance issues with that. It's just, again, me being a little bit paranoid, I guess, so we have even more insulation going on. Those are the two screws right there. Again, not a big issue, but it never hurts to be too safe. In the bottom of the core support, I made a custom cradle, if you will, to hold the radiator and the backside bottom portion of the condenser. So it's a couple pieces of angle iron and a couple brackets. So the first piece of angle iron is sitting up underneath the condenser, nice and tight. I welded a couple brackets in there and bolted it to the core support so that is extremely tight. 
There's also another piece of angle iron coming across the front, and that holds the radiator as well as the fan shroud. It too is bolted to the core support. As you can see, I was able to use two of like you know the traditional rubber isolators, so the radiator has that nice soft cushion to sit on. And then up at the top where it gets a little tight underneath the core support, I'll use those gas tank insulating straps. Perfectly snug. While it looks a little crude, I'm also particularly proud of this piece because I made it to where it used the original holes of the upper fan shroud, the, you know, the one that came from the factory, and it holds not only the new fan shroud, but the top of the radiator. I was originally planning on using these to mount the fans to the radiator, but I didn't really want to. There's nothing wrong with using those, but again, I'm not running with a ton of space here, so in order to do that, I really didn't see a good option of being able to tilt all of this forward and getting access to down there to get all the clips in place. It, there's just not a lot of room, so I feared that I would end up having to take the radiator and the fans out all at once if some sort of replacement or service was going to be needed, and I would probably have to take off, you know, pulleys and belts and all that kind of stuff, and I just, I didn't want to fool with it. So, I made that bracket down there kind of work with the bracket that I just showed you up here to hold this thing in so tight, there's no way it's going to go anywhere. It is absolutely secured without having to use the plastic clips. So here's the result of that. It's a two inch wide piece of metal that spans the majority of the fan shroud. It comes down just far enough past that lip that it's like right where these little rubber flaps are mounted, but it doesn't prevent any of them from opening, so there's no compromise there. And then as we continue down, you can see where the fan shroud tucks in just behind that other piece of angle iron. I know it's a little bit dark, but it's also sandwiched in there between the rubber isolators that I used at the bottom of the radiator. So the fans are very much secured in place. You can see right here, just pulling on the fans rocks the whole truck. They don't shimmy one bit. Just to reiterate once again, it's important to try to prevent any metal on metal going on because you don't want to wear out a particular component or cause a leak. You also don't want any possibilities of like squeaks because metal on metal is going to squeak. So if you have a tight area like this right here, or the top edge of the radiator, like the actual support, not the, not the cooling jackets. It's sitting right underneath the core support here. A gas tank insulator strap works wonders. Well everyone, I guess that's gonna wrap it up for this video because I have to get all of this torn back down so I can start refurbishing everything and moving closer to firing this bad boy up for the first time. If you haven't subscribed already, please consider doing so because there is a lot more content where that came from. And of course, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to leave a like below because it really helps the video a lot. A big thanks once again to O'Reilly Auto Parts for all of their support. Don't forget, take advantage of that Saab Kyle 20 discount code. Link is in the description box below. I'll see you guys on the next one. Take care.